Today on Handy Dad TV, I'm going to show you how to wire two different switches with pilot lights. What's a pilot light? Well, it's a little indicator on the switch that tells you whether that power is on or off. And that way, if you can't see that light from this switch, you can tell that the power is on. Now, when would you use that? Well, let's say in your attic or your basement or maybe your backyard. You've got a floodlight out back and you want to know that the power is on. You can use a pilot light. And this one can be wired either way so that that's a pilot light on when the switch is on, or like it is right now, it's a night light. So it's on when the switch is off. I'm gonna show you how to wire both of these switches coming up. All right, so here we have two switches that are controlling two different lights independently. And I'm gonna put these two switches in here and show you the difference between the two. The first one I'm gonna do is much simpler. This one is a pilot light that goes on when the switch is on. And that's gonna replace this switch here. Now the only way I can use this one, it requires a neutral. So I can only use this switch if I have a neutral in this box. So let's open this up and we're gonna take a look and see. All right, with the power still on, I very carefully opened up this switch and I found that there are two black wires connected to the switch and there are two white wires connected together. Now that's a very good thing because that tells me that these are both hot wires, the black ones, and the white wires are separate. Those are gonna be neutral wires. If I was to open up that switch and find something like this, where I just had a white and a black wire connected to the switch, to the screws, then I know this is not a neutral. This is actually a hot wire because we only switch hot wires. And in this case, this is called a switch loop. And what it could mean is that this one is hot all the time. And then when the switch is on, it goes back the black wire and that's what turns on the light. But a situation like this, where the white wire is connected to the switch, that is not a neutral. So the best practice is to put black tape on here, but in a lot of older homes, you won't find that. But if you see a white wire connected to the screw, that is not a neutral wire. But in my situation here, I have these white wires connected together, so that is a neutral. And that means I can use this switch. All right, let's take a closer look at this switch and what connections are on it. It's got four screws on it. The green one obviously is gonna be the ground, that's the bare copper wire. And the silver screw is going to be the neutral. Now the other two, one of them says common. This is a black screw and this one is a brass screw. And in situations like this, usually the black screw is the one that is gonna be hot all the time, okay? That's why it says common. And then this brass one is gonna be the one that actually goes to the light. All right, so, and these are back wired devices and they accept one wire only. So I'm gonna to have to pigtail my neutrals. But before I turn off my power, I need to determine which one of those black wires is the hot lead all the time. Now to determine that, I'm gonna use my non-contact voltage tester here. And I'm gonna put it on, just put it near the screw, and you should be able to tell which one is hot. The top one is the hot one. And if I turn on the switch, the bottom one becomes hot. And it turns off when the switch is off. So the top one is the hot lead. That's the one that's gonna get connected to the black screw. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna connect is the ground wire. Now the ground wires are all connected underneath a Wago connector. You can use wire nuts as well, but I use Wagos here. And there's three wires connected there. One of them, this one is called a pigtail that comes to the switch. And I'm just reusing the same one that was there before. And I'm just got a little bit of a loop on it and it goes right around that screw to make sure it's nice and tight. All right, the next thing I'm gonna look for is this wire, which is hot all the time. That's gonna go underneath this black screw. And that's the one that's labeled common. All right, that's good and tight. And then this wire is the one that goes to the light. So that gets power when the switch is turned on. And the last one I have to worry about is the neutral wire. And since I have two neutrals here under a Wago, I can change this out to be a third Wago, a three-way. And I'm gonna take a short piece of wire, a pigtail, 
and I'm going to connect these all together. And then this wire goes under here, and that's what lets that light light up. It needs a neutral for the light to work. All right, let's push these back in, and I'm going to turn the power on and give it a test. All right, with the power back on, I'm going to try and make this as easy as possible, but when the switch is on, the light goes on, but it also has the red light there that goes on. And hopefully you can see that. It is very dim, but uh, it's there. You can see it. All right, now that I've completed that one, I'm going to turn my attention to this one. This one is a little bit more complicated because you can choose whether you want the pilot light to be on when the switch is on or on when the switch is off. Now I'm going to sound like a broken record, but remember, because I've got two black wires on the switch and the two white wires are connected together, then I know that these are neutral wires. And if any of the white wires were connected to the switch, they would not be neutral wires. So in this scenario, I have a neutral wire. This is good. I'm good to go. Similarly to the other one, I have to know which one of the black wires is constantly hot. So let me find out here with my non-contact voltage tester. In this scenario, it's the bottom one that is always hot. And if the switch goes on, that's when the top one becomes hot. So bottom one is the hot one. Let me turn off the power and take out the switch. All right, let's take a look at this device now. Now this switch is set up by default. We will use it so this is a pilot light, meaning when the switch is on, the light will be on. Okay, and in that scenario, we're going to always use the ground. That's going to be the bare copper one right here. And this is going to be the neutral. The white or the silver screw gets the white wire, which is the neutral. And then on this side, we have two black screws with a jumper between them. Okay, with that little shunt in between them, they are electrically connected. So I don't need to put a wire on both, just on one of them. And it doesn't really matter which. And then on this side is a brass screw. So what happens is when the switch is turned on, these two get connected. And if power is on over here, then this light lights up. Okay? So what I'm going to do in this scenario is the hot lead is going to be right here. So that's the power always on. When the switch is on, power will come here and turn on that light. As well as whatever else, you know, the, the other light that I have turned on. All right, so let's wire this up in pilot mode. All right, so now I have this wired up, and what I have is the hot lead is the one on the top right, the brass screw. And on the other side is the two black screws, and that's the one that goes to the light. So, and this white one is a pigtail, just like I did on the other one. I had to pigtail the neutral, and of course, like I said, the ground is always connected. So. The magic happens when the switch is turned on. And you should be able to see there is a pilot light there. It's a red light and it glows whenever that switch is on. And when the switch is on, power is on the black screws. And now it's off. Okay, next I'm going to rewire this so that this works in what's called nightlight mode. So that this light would be on when the switch is off. All right, to wire this as a pilot light, I had to do one simple thing, which was reverse these two black wires, okay? So this one now goes to the light, and this one is the constant hot on the left-hand side. And then I had to do a jumper between the brass screw and the silver screw, okay? That is kind of funky that you're connecting a black wire to a silver screw, which is usually a neutral. Let me turn on the power and I'll show you how it works. Okay, there you should be able to see that the red light is on when the switch is off. And when I turn the switch on, the red light goes off. So that's considered night light mode. Now, let's take a look with my non-contact voltage tester and we'll show you what's happening. So this side is constant hot, the black screw. This side is not. So the real question is, well, how is this getting 
any power to that light? How is that light completing the circuit? And the fact of the matter is it's completing the circuit because it's got the black wire from the light connected here. As long as there's a bulb up in this socket, what's happening is a little bit of current is flowing through that bulb and that's how it's getting this neutral over here. That's how that's getting lit. So if I take that bulb out, look what happens. The pilot goes off. So that's an interesting little tidbit. The way that this is working is it's taking a little bit of current through the light, but it's not enough current to make the light light up. It's just enough to make this little LED light up. And when the switch is on, these are all hot, and so that light can't light up. There's no circuit there. Hopefully that didn't blow your mind too much, but that's how you set that up as a night light. It's a rare case that you might want to do it that way, but uh, in most cases, you're going to use those as pilot lights so that when the switch is on, the lights are on. All right, if you have any questions about switches with pilot lights, leave me a comment down below. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one. If you need shade on your deck or patio this summer, check out Toya Grid Pergola Kits. You source the lumber locally and can assemble this modular system in as little as 30 minutes. Check the video description for links to videos and more information about Toya Grid.